Hey, dickheads. That's it. That's the end. Our break is over. After this episode, two more weeks, you will get Season 4, Episode 1 of Private Dicks. If you're a patron over on Patreon, ours is www.patreon.com slash unethicalpodcast, you will be able to listen to that episode pretty soon. Other than that, it'll be out in two weeks, and we'll be going back on our old schedule of an episode every two weeks. And maybe more in between. Bonus episodes, updates. You know how we roll. Private Dicks is back, baby. Private Dicks is back. An elite team of private detectives. What if balloons are aliens? Like maybe that's the key component we're missing. Cover-ups. John's guilty. Mysteries that need to be solved. Maybe Mormons need mountains. Richard, shut up. The arguments and discussions in this podcast are made by people who have the same intellect as me. And I'm 11. This is all for entertainment purposes and is intended to get listeners laughing and discussing themselves. For listeners who can't handle swearing, hyperbole, and just plain idiocy, discretion is advised. Have you ever had those ethical discussions with your friends where you're deciding if you should kill someone for a billion dollars or... If pineapple belongs on pizza, well, this is the kind of stuff we're going to talk about on this show. This is Dick with a Bow. That's the sound of money. Fresh printed money. 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 Do you have a good one you want? I'm sorry, I'm not prepared for this at all. I'm. I've been pretty busy doing other things. Like I had trivia. This whole week was crazy for me. I'm sorry. I could have taken time. I really didn't. I'm just making excuses. Hey, no, it's totally fine. If you need it, if you want more time and you no, just need a private dicks, we can come back to it. No, I don't need more time. I'll argue about anything anytime. Even if I don't have a real opinion, I'll argue about it. <laughs> <laughs> mm, the one I was thinking of is, is it okay to genetically modify food in order to feed more people? Oh, what side do you want to take on that? Yes. You, you're going with yes? Yeah. I'll go with no. Do you agree fundamentally or disagree? fundamentally i don't there's so many people like what are you gonna do let a bunch of people not exist people can't have kids but i'm with you yes for sure but i'm i'll argue no i definitely argue no (laughs) oh just for your uh just for a little bit of banter before we start this i actually recently came into one of our ethical dilemmas from before and it's proving very hard um I found out. One second. I found out someone's cheating on someone, and uh, I probably shouldn't tell the world, but uh, I'm not going to say the name. But I found out, and now all I can think about when I see that person is that that's happening. I don't want to say anything because I'm not involved. It's exactly my point. It's like I don't know these people that well, but I do know them. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What was the the only the only outcome we said was to kill them? Yeah, exactly. So, so you know what uh, you're gonna do. I gotta find someone <laughs> who'll pay me a million dollars. Actually, <laughs> then I'll kill them. Oh man, you! I reckon you have a Freudian slip, and that's how it's all gonna come out. And you're gonna look like a massive jackass, and it's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I should start just recording my life now, so you can watch it happen. I should just start. Hire a film crew because GoPro. I, I, GoPro is not good enough. It doesn't get my face. You know, you guys need my moneymaker. If I'm going to be in it, we need to, someone has to get good angles of me and my, the reaction. You're a content creator now and you are passing up a massive, massive opportunity to have some real gold content by going in with cameras and then being like, here's the evidence that this person is cheating. Go. And then like keep <laughs> zoomed in and just watch it happen. For sure. And that's all good when you live in a place with more than 25 people that live at it. But as soon as you piss <laughs> off a 12th of the population, then you start becoming a pariah. <laughs> and you're not already. <laughs> well, I bring tourism to Miracle Falls. Did you not see that uh, article? I made a- Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I am the main attraction here. My name should be on the post on the fucking sign soon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I did actually say that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> It's funny because like I the whole video is me making fun of the town. 
And then these I know that's are, what I thought when I saw it. I was like, isn't he heaping shit on his <laughs> yeah. down the whole time? Well, in the article, he's he lists all the places that I go, and the first place is like the arena or something, and then the second place is the needle disposal drop off. And he writes that in the article. I'm like, I was <laughs> making fun of the needle disposal <laughs> drop off, and why is that a tourist destination? Hopefully, somebody <laughs> reads this and goes, "Oh, thank God, I can go use my heroin in peace near the falls." <laughs> <laughs> the drug tourism coming in Fucking is it man. heroin or is it for diabetes well you don't have a needle drop-off point at like outside of like the liquor store for people who have diabetes i don't think i think that would be for addicts instead of them going into like the corner at the liquor store shooting up and then just leaving the needle there they just bring it over to the needle disposal like, I feel like people have diabetes, know how to dispose of needles. They don't have to go to on a street somewhere and have like a little Hang fucking... Hang on, you have... So in Australia, every bathroom, every single public toilet has a needle disposal unit in it. Do you guys not have that? No. Whoa! No, we have like some places will. I'm not saying that no places do, but not every place. And there's a pretty big opiate problem up here, honestly, if I'm, I'm being straight with it. And people are shooting up in like kids parks and they're not going to make their way. Even if there was one at the public bathroom, they're not going to make their way drugged all out with their garbage and make it to the public washroom and throw it out. It's just not the how they'll just leave it there in the kids park. So a, a thing that's been happening a lot over the recent years in a lot of places is just these little outdoor disposal units. Like it's just like, it looks like a mailbox or something and you can just put your needles in there. So the junkies can just like move their way towards that instead of just leaving it where kids can potentially poke themselves and stuff. It's just kind of like a, but in York Falls, it's so small. It's just funny. Cause like the liquor store is beside a children's park. So it's like between the liquor store and the fucking park. Thanks. Like anyways. <laughs> so, see, that's so bizarre. Cause not, it's not just like every toilet, like every toilet. So all, every one of my restaurants, all of the toilets have just in it. bathroom you go through in Perth at least has a little yellow bone on the wall for disposal, for needle disposal. Yeah, it's a good idea. I don't see why they don't, but they do, they just don't. They really don't. Uh, maybe in the city. I don't like, think I've ever seen anyone empty it, though. Yeah. Who the fuck empties it? <laughs> I would imagine they have to hire, like, a uh, waste disposal, like a specialty person to come in and do that once a month or something i i don't think you would you should know what do you, what do you guys do for your washrooms you guys just get the fucking 14 year old girls that are working the fries cleaning up to clean that open or what no we like we've got someone who goes because we've got sanitary bins and nappy bins right in in the in the toilets and needle disposal units oh who the fuck cleans the un the needle disposal units well that's that's going to be on your monday meeting agenda a hundred percent. Imagine it's just overflowing. They're all super scary. Now kids could just poke their fingers. Look at the liability you could be under. Oh my God. Do you have insurance for that? Oh, so much insurance. <laughs> Needle disposal units. I need to know. So Dickie, is it okay to genetically modify food in order to feed more mo people? Yes. No. Come on. Why? What? Do you want me to start? I'll give you a good. No. I'll, I'll give you a bunch of reasons. Go. Now, sure, there is a lot of people out there and stuff, but I think the problem is we're, we're we can do it, so we don't actually kind of restrict population. Like at this point, the Earth can't sustain what we have, and mm. we just keep making it allowed to have more, and that's just one reason. Okay. Um, like let's just stop making more people and then we won't need to do this anymore. And then we can eat healthier and be stronger and smarter okay. and faster and everything else instead of like processed cheese. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Hey, 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 <laughs> I had processed cheese. I had cheese at the Dodgers stadium, right? In San Fran. That shit is not cheese. Like that is not, it is the wrong color. It is the wrong flavor. It gave me the absolute power shits. That stuff is not like processed cheese. Look, if on, on that basis alone, I would have to agree with you because that gave me the absolute shit. However, <laughs> <laughs> we cannot, 
we cannot sustain, like you said, I agree, we cannot sustain and feed the people that we currently have. But this would also help solve that problem to be able to feed the people that we currently have. So why don't we pair it with, why don't we genetically modify it to make people infertile? (laughs) Oh God, now you're making me want to kind of do it because that actually makes a lot of sense. (laughs) But only certain people. Yeah, the uh, I'm not going to say what I was going to say. Oh, God. Uh, the Irish. Uh, the, <laughs> Australians. The oh, how very dare you. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're doing that to ourselves, mate, with all the booze that we ingest. No, okay. The Anyone who has a low, so, no, low IQ. <laughs> how low is too low for Bo? Well, the average is 100, so let's just keep 90. 90? So we're just going to go below, below average and high. I have a lot of family members that are going to die. This is going to suck. You know what I'm saying? Same. Yes. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, like, there's also the, the other side of the argument with the no of if you can't understand what's on the back of your packaging – like why are you eating it you know like hydroxylene 48 like what the fuck is that or i got exactly and none of us know it now so why does it matter if we genetically modify it no one's looking at the back of the package now the only thing that we're looking at is how many standard drinks is this alcoholic beverage can i still drive after two of them that's the only thing we're checking on the back of our packaging okay (laughs) Does that, does it actually say that on the back of any type of booze of yours? It says this is equal to six beers. Yeah. hundred percent. Does yours not? No. Are you joking? Hang on. This is a branded fancy one. Normally it just has a little circle and it says um, like 1.8 or something like for a Canadian club. It's 1.2. Okay. 1.4. This one says. Contains approximately 1.2 standard drinks. Huh. See, maybe it does because that's pretty small. I thought it was like, would be more like, I'd have to go look at a liquor somewhere. Um, and it tells you how many standard drinks. What's a standard drink? Like, like an ounce of alcohol? Mils? No, okay. yeah. 30 mils, whatever that. Yeah. 30 mils. We don't need to go stupid for the Americans. That's fine. <laughs> um, like the, th- the 30 mils, ha- like it basically, cause over here, and they, they know that they're never going to be able to turn around and say, "Hey, Australians," unless you have. Well, basically, they're like, "Unless you, unless you're an Australian with a drinking problem, you're not going to stop drinking." So, here is how many it's safely allowed for you to drive. So, I know that I could have these. These are one point two. So, I can have two. Being a girl, I can have two of these in two hours no two of these in three hours and that's it this equals 1.2 standard drinks what's the math to know how much you're allowed to one before you drive one an hour for girls it's one an hour like for an average girl right for an average girl it's one an hour and then every hour after but for boys it's for, or for men it's two in the first hour and then one for every hour after that's on our advertising on tv Huh. Australia is very progressive ahead of their time. What? I think ahead of your time, <laughs> you know, no, we just, we've got a, we've got a massive binge problem. Yeah. I kind of was, I didn't want to say that. I was trying to be nice. I was trying to say <laughs> you guys are futuristic and not just a bunch of drunks, beach drunks, yeah. you know, yeah. no, I got, no. I got swamp drunks up here. Don't worry. There's lots of drunks. I'm just in the swamp. So swamp drunks. <laughs> or frozen drunks. Yeah. Um, Ice drunks. That's, I mean, the only two, well, actually, and the 10 cent refundable cans. Those are the only two things that people are looking on the back of this. Like if I'm looking at this, ingredients, carbonated filtered water, cane sugar syrup. I can't even pronounce that. Yeah, I think that's gross. I want to say, I think it's weird how we'll just eat shit. We don't even know what it is, but we all do. I know it's not, it's not unavoidable. You can avoid it. There's some hardcore like, vegan organists out there whatever the fuck they want to call themselves uh organic mm. food fuck faces uh, and i get that and i, I <laughs> i'm okay with it and i i would pref- if i could do it it would be i would like to do it because it's really hard to uh, that's why people don't look because you start reading it and you're like 
what the fuck am I eating? And then you look it up and it's not, still doesn't even make sense. Like, I bet you if you Googled the word that you're like, I don't even know what that is. You'd be like, still don't know what that is. Even after explanation, you know? Well, it's got in brackets on my one. It says natural sweetener. And maybe that's just not nature. Maybe that's the other thing. Maybe we, we shouldn't be like, maybe we should have a cap naturally. And that's why we're fucking ourselves up because we think we're smarter than nature, but nature will wipe us out in the end. Yeah, it will. It will. Absolutely. It's a chemical compound, a sugar alcohol used as a food additive and sugar substitute. It's naturally occurring and is made from corn. Okay. The more I know. Like what's wrong with genetically modifying our food if it makes us better? Like, for example, our brains are uh, far more reactive and gain better much better supplies of energy from because if you've got a lipid sol- soluble membrane around it right so it's far easier for our brains to absorb lipids fats than it is for them to absorb carbohydrates right so if we know that about our brains and that's why high fat diets low carb diets without going to the extreme tend to be a little bit better for like, for example, when I did keto with Christy, I didn't, I barely needed to take my medicine quite as much because my brain was just felt like working far better. If we know that what's wrong with genetically modifying our food so that it gives our brain better fuel. It's like any technology though, right? If it's used for good, then it is good. But most times it's used for profit and then it just gets, You know, like I would be totally cool if we were just enhancing all of our food to make us smarter or faster or more efficiently fuel burning. So we have to eat less. That would make sense. In fact, they should do look towards that, but that doesn't make as much money. And that's the, I feel like a lot of these ethical things are going to come down to like, who makes money off of it to me? (laughs) Cause like, that's where it all boils down at the end. That's what makes me so sad about the world. Like, I just want Pokemon to be real so much. But I know that if that if Pokemon were real in this world, we would have sex with them. And humans are just horrible. <laughs> I'm just picturing you wanting to have sex with a Machomp or something. <laughs> I just made you spit Oh, yeah, you definitely you. did. I didn't think you were going there. I didn't think you were saying we were going to all fuck like... Uh, a Charmander would burn my balls off. I don't think I'm having sex with a Charmander. I don't think like... Uh... I said this to my brother and my brother sent me a picture of Lopani and said, what? And you're saying that she's not asking for it? And I was like, <laughs> oh, fuck. But that's What's... what humans do. We ruin everything. And I, I was saying it the other day and I was like, I just, I so desperately want Pokemon to be real because of how much I love it. But then I'm like, no, actually, I want Pokemon to be real so I can go into their world because if they came here, humans would ruin them humans would ruin them and then have sex with them probably like i'm i'm just thinking about the mr mime you wouldn't even have to lock him up to have him as your sex slave you'd be like you're in a cage mr mime yeah uh but yeah anyways the it's true and i think that's maybe a case (laughs) to go more on the less genetically modified stuff Uh, it's just us I, i would say even get rid of it because we have to be able to learn as humans, and once we can learn this, we can start doing crazier signs, I think. But once we start learning how to control our baser urges as a collective society, like needing more, wanting more, uh, n- not needing more, wanting more, and then just like not giving a fuck about yeah. everybody else, we, we should yeah. probably like tame ourselves from, I don't know. I don't know. I think that's just a bigger conversation than just genetically modified food really so i should probably like put a button on it but i mean it's just yeah I, it's so it's so evil right now like food mo- you're not even allowed taking genetically modified like seeds from your fucking food like your fruits or vegetables and plant them because that seed is belongs to like nestle or whoever the fuck owns it right like the genetic makeup of that newly genetically modified fruit or vegetable is patented by a company so as a mm-hmm. farmer like me and you could probably do it because they how the fuck would they know but if a farmer like just co- i don't know collected a bunch of these seeds they'd get in shit because this is our tomato or our version of fucking carrots it's so evil i think you i think you're right it's fuck i'm gonna steal seeds now 
That's all I was thinking. <laughs> when you were talking about it, I was like, fuck, I'm going to steal seeds. Yeah, eventually, like when we nuke ourselves, we'll all need us. There's a seed bank somewhere. I'm sure we'll be fine. But you ever see these things? Wow. They cut like these guys that collect like seeds for and they're just in a underground bunker, like thousands of seeds, different kinds of shit, because they know it's going to be needed later on. If they ever need them, they exist. Seed banks. You ever see these things? No. Oh, yeah. Super cool. So crazy. Some guy I was just watching uh, a video. He grew like a 150 year old tomato plant just to see the difference in how it's like evolved in 150 years. And it was like a very dark, dark magenta red, like very, it was like different color, different shape. It was cool. Wow. Just, that yeah. Is genetic really modification. Cool, yeah. Just genetic modification. How it's like made things look like tomatoes now are like bright red and they like kind of look more friendly. These other ones, they look scary. And, and I was looking at tomatoes. They used to think they were poison back in the day. Like in ancient Roman times, they think tomatoes were poison. They would avoid them because yeah. they have acid in them and they would eat off of plates that had like lead in it, like lead lined plates wow. and stuff. And the acid would yeah. like uh, make the lead come out and then people would be eating lead. So they assumed it was the tomato, not the fucking wow. lead they were eating. Right. So for like hundreds of years, people avoided tomatoes like the plague because it was like killing people. Wow. Isn't that fun? That's Anyways. so crazy. I can't, I'm going to, I'm get, once we're done, I'm going to Google a picture of those, the, the old tomatoes. Cause I'm actually fascinated by that. Yeah. Oh, if I'll pull it up right now. I'll show you 150 year old tomats. Tomato. Oh, <gasps> Christy, come look at this. Look at that. So there's like a, they've got seed banks right and that's a 150 year old tomato seed and that's a modern day tomato that's how much they've evolved in genetically modified tomatoes that's crazy from 150 years ago imagine it tastes like shit Tasty. Oh, <laughs> look there it doesn't look good does it look at that Ugh. like that is a color that in nature we would not we would stay far away from a dark red color. That's naughty. No, do not touch. Make you sick. Bad, bad red. Bad red, bad. Yeah, yeah. My answer is still yes, but I just don't know. Like you said, humans. Well, like I said, because I'm a genius. Humans suck, <laughs> and they won't use them for good purposes. Like I suggested in the beginning making our genetically modified food make people sterile who decides who's gonna get sterile that's the major yeah humans are too somebody's with a strong personality is going to make that decision and it doesn't necessarily mean it's true it just means they have the most yelly or the most money right i'm gonna i will put my hand up i will take this mantle i will sacrifice and i will choose who the ones are and i apologize to all of my family members who have a lower than 90 iq <laughs> Your first. You and you know what? 90. <laughs> because that's all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just... not. Ladies. That's not... Uh yeah, okay. That's not uh that was a compliment. Thank you for calling me a lady. Couldn't be better. You're welcome. There's, there's not a better sex out there. That's so that's so true. Women are so great. Better than dudes. I think, I think, does that mean that, uh, what are we going with this? Does that mean I win on that or? No, look, we're going to need some really strict legislation around it, but I think we should genetically modified food for only to benefit, uh, benefit depending on, it should be controlled by smaller communities. I'm going to concede. I'm going to let you win on this one. <gasps> I'm going to say, fuck you. Because I do agree that we have to be able to use what we have to make the world better, but we have to watch this more. We see the problem is it happened so quickly with this stuff that we didn't legislate it enough and they got away with murder. And now it's, we just have to watch the companies, but we're not doing that. I don't think uh, food companies in general and letting them have the power over it is really the scary part. It's not the genetic engineering, the genetic engineering never did nothing to no one. It's the greedy assholes. So mm. I, I'm going to have to agree with you. I think we have to, to keep, to sustain what we have even, you know, yeah. imagine we're all like fend for ourselves now. <laughs> it would be like, okay, well, I guess I'm going to be a 
Mennonite now because they're the only ones farming. I guess I'm hanging out with them. A what? Mennonite. Like a Mormon, but not really a Mormon. More like more like an Amish person. They like I was about to say an Amish person. It's kind of like Amish, but it's not really Amish. But yeah, it's the same. They live off the grid. They don't use modern technology unless it helps their farming. Like they, they won't drive a car to town, but they'll drive a tractor around their field. They don't oh, wear yeah, so. any colors, like black clothes only, the big wide brim hats, like an Amish kind of thing. You know, the women, they have like 10 wives and 14 brothers, sisters. And All right. What's your one, Dick? I have a couple, but we're both going to disagree with this, but people would agree. That's what the problem is. It's like, is it okay? or proper to put your kids into church or not church, your belief system, like jam your belief system down when they're young, or should they be able to learn it on their own as they get older? You know, cause I I find here in Ontario or in Canada, they have a Catholic school board which I find is horseshit because it's paid for by the government. They get a lot more funding than we do. And I could send my kids there and they'd get more socioeconomic bonus from it. But then I have to jam fucking religion down their face. Right. Or even your own belief system about like, I think people who wear blue should not wear blue. And then you should agree with that too. You know, it's even better one. Actually, there's two of them here. Should everybody be allowed to have kids or should you have to get a license? Should you have to yes. be tested? <laughs> yes. Should that be a free thing everyone should do? You want to do that one? <laughs> no. Which side do you want to take? What do you think? I can argue either side on that. If you want to do the, should we license people to have children one? There's an argument to be had for both sides. Well, see, oh, I don't even know what side I sit on. You pick. I'll go with being able to do whatever you want versus if, and then you can do license if you want. I don't know. <laughs> it just, it feels like it should be a yes. But the problem is, is it feels like it should be a yes. I'll go no. Okay. We could do that. Bo. Yeah. What's up? Bo. <laughs> what did I call you? Bo, Bo, Bajobo. What was the other thing? Jojo, Bajobo. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that one's never been. No, hang on. It had been said before. Hang on. Hang on. It had been said before? Mm-hmm. Bobo Bajobo. Jojo Babo. Uh, Bobo Bajabo. Bobo Bajobo. Oh, Bajobo. Yes. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? I was wondering what mm. you would think. Where's, where do you sit on this? Do you think everyone should be able to procreate whenever they'd like? Or do you think there should be some sort of like licensing system or perhaps a testing system of some sort to control who is allowed and who is not allowed to procreate in this world? I, I love this. It's such a hard one for both of I us. Know. This is so hard because I want to say yes. But it's so hard to police. And who's in... Wait, now I'm going down the same pathway. Yes. No. I'm on on the license side. License to breed. License to breed? Yeah. I hope they don't call it that because it's not going to go over well. Uh, The breeding department. The license. uh, You got to get your breeding license. Why? It just sounds like you're a mare. It sounds like you're a steed, like a breeding, like it doesn't sound, it dehumanizes the whole child Come. bearing process. The whole child thing. We've been having kids for thousands of years and at our own will. And it's- As someone who had a very clinical pregnancy, getting a clinical way of getting pregnant, it definitely doesn't have that sort of attachment for me anyway you didn't just take one for the team you weren't like one guy no come on in. no get in here no, i want no. you to come just Ew. once <laughs> <laughs> no no so okay that's uh, that's actually interesting you had to get like you went ivf i guess yeah that's cool so you had to go through yeah. a lot of rigmaroles just to be able to get a kid right yeah meanwhile uh yeah 
16 year old teenager down the street banged her fucking uh what is it footy her footy captain from high school and they're having a child in high school yep yeah that's right yeah i i'm totally for that (laughs) (laughs) Ah! so the reason (laughs) the (laughs) reason (laughs) <laughs> you couldn't even say that with a straight face. The reason why I think there should be a license is going to be leaning on something that is going to make, would make people feel a bit uncomfortable, right? People always talk about the different ways and like the different and parenting styles, right? From a clinical psychologist research point of view, there are four styles of parenting, right? There's, authoritarian authoritative permissive and neglectful um what there's one of those and it talks about the different levels of direction like uh, discipline and warmth and where you sit on that quadrant of warmth versus discipline depends on where you sit in the quadrants it has been proven time and time and time and time again that authority parenting is this one high warm high discipline right Lots of affection with your kids, lots of explaining with your kids, lots of patience with your kids, but very high standards for them as well. So the same level of the warmth that you show them should ha- come with the same level of discipline, right? And and um, expectations, basically, is what they're saying. Um, so with, <clears throat> with that, I don't understand a lot of the time, like there's this show that's going on TV that's talking about different Australian parents having discussions about the best way to raise their kids. Like, why is that a discussion? We've been told through science and through research over lots and lots of decades and lots and lots of babies and lots of cultures because the same four types of parenting is, is the same across all cultures. The only ones, the only things that are sort of different is how it's, um, so when there's cultures that are uh, based more on um, community raising your kids, like lots of like grandparents and aunties and stuff all in the same house, um, same sort of thing applies. It doesn't really matter whether you've got a smaller community or a bigger community. It's demonstrated how much warmth is the key, like is a key one, like a key part of child, child rearing. It's, if we've got this evidence, if we've got this sign, like this scientific scientific evidence, we've been demonstrated what the best way to raise our kids is. Why let someone who can't fulfill that raise a kid? Here's my counter to that, and I agree. Uh, if we have a good system, why not use it? But most of the world's best art or literature or uh <laughs> just just stuff in general <laughs> is built from people that are damaged broken humans mostly broken from an early age so do we want to uh, d- homogenize the way everyone is so everyone kind of acts the same everyone's kind of or do we want these crazy monets that'll cut their fucking ears off in the love of their art or do we want the fucking uh super sad kid who never had a friend growing up turning into nirvana do we want that kind of stuff we do we want this high art that exists out there now because of pain because of shitty hardships you're gonna get enough pain anyway when you're older and also i don't care how much you think your jackson pollock is relying on some kid's hard upbringing i don't think it's worth it at all (laughs) and that's someone who is both a musician and a uh, version of an artist like i 100 percent. would you even still be interested in these things had you had a different upbringing would that even come across your mind to do or would you be like now i uh am writing a textbook for the proper usage of a uh, fork and knife like oh wow your life is not boring at all You're- <laughs> how dare you cutlery <laughs> is important and should be studied and no I disagree. I would still learn the drums because I love patterns. Answer that question from the narcissistic point of view because I haven't had a non-traumatic upbringing. So, <laughs> Ooh, same as everybody. But not, it's not same as everybody. I, I don't know. There's lots I feel of people like that are. You, uh, I, I think like we need to have pain as well to understand how awesome things can be. Like if we didn't have the shittier parts of our upbringing or whatever. 
like uh, I don't know. I I just have you ever seen the kids that had just like the perfect life? The first they're just boring people now. When I was a kid, like the perfect Sorry? parent. What's wrong with that? I I like interesting <laughs> people. I like people with a fun story. I'm not hanging out with those guys. I'm hanging out with you, Bo. You know what I mean? You're interesting to me. You're not. Uh, no, you're a I, freak. <laughs> we're all uh, everybody I hang out with is a freak. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna deny that. And I don't want bad things to happen to my kids. So I get what you're saying. So I'm probably mm. going to make some boring children. Sorry, mm. not my fault. And that's what you're getting. Maybe they'll be cool with it. But for me, I like the people with a crazy story. Some of the dark. That's why I think I got even pulled towards the podcast. That I listen. Like, like the guys that have like a crazy upbringing have like a good different point of view. I don't think taking away trauma is going to do anything except for hurt art. <laughs> Comedy, especially, in my opinion, and, and I love and comedy. Potentially, potentially, even compassion. Like, would would we as a society be as? Because you tend to see people have a little bit more trauma, a bit more of that um, experience of the 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 bigger side of life, like in the more extreme sides of life, tend to have a. If, if gone the opposite way, tend to have a lot more compassion if they haven't the opposite way and locked the, like locked themselves yeah. up. But we're going to the extreme example of like everybody parenting the same way. I feel like people should just like have kids when they get older and that's it. When you're younger, you shouldn't even take a test. Really, you should just like, come on, man, you're fucking 16 years old. That's not really a good plan for you. But mm -hmm. if that's their choice and they want to do that, I'm all for choice, right? And the test, the test thing I could see if we could take away the like, do you have a genetic disposition to get beating children? You know what I mean? Like, or something, get rid of the really extreme bad cases. I'm cool with that. But other than that, I think everyone should just have a choice to do whatever they want most of the times. So what about the ones who know, like the... And this is where it gets. This is where it gets a bit tricky. Being um, a gay woman that's had two children, but never had sex. Like <laughs> this is like we where it gets into the ones where there's couples who can't have kids because they're not genetically compatible, or they've got a genetic defect. And then the sciences that allows them to be able to have kids. Why are they like? If we had to have a license necessarily like would this license just allow to have procreative sex or would it be that you can come and have a baby in IVF or like can we genetically modify our babies because that's I'm on that side <laughs> <laughs> you know who else is on that side <laughs> Hitler also uh, <laughs> me and my family would be fine with Hitler so <laughs> yeah. the uh, mashing of clams is having sex you guys don't worry you just because you didn't have a pepe inside of you you've had sex Second of all, <laughs> that maybe the people that they should lessen up. Actually, I think they should lessen restrictions because here uh, in Canada, I don't know about where you are, but in Canada, if you want to adopt a child, it is like a oh. very arduous process. Yes. Meanwhile, crackhead Sally has six kids at home. She can barely crack it. So they I should know that probably, drives me. Yeah, they should probably loosen up that and take those kids and give them to somebody who wants them, right? Like, I completely agree. I think I think that is. I think the question should be less about like, should we put a license or or a test? I think we should just make adopting kids far easier and not financially beneficial necessarily. Like, I get that fostering needs to be financially compensated. I do. I just that just sets up people to rot the system. But if you made adoption far easier. I've been in a stable relationship with my partner for three years. I've been, I, you know, I've got the same job. I'm, you know, I've got, I've got enough money. Like it really shouldn't need a thousand other things. If you're going to let crackhead Sally have 12 babies, like if you're not going to castrate her and make her infertile. Yeah. You also have to make it a lot less of a dirty secret that you gave up your kid for adoption. You should, it should be a lot less. Yeah. Like a lot more accepting. Stigmatized. Yeah, that's the word. Stigmatized. It should yep. be a lot less stigmatized that I don't think I can take care of it or I don't want to have a kid. And this was like, I have to, because of whatever reason, I couldn't prevent it from happening or I'm just stupid and it happened and I don't want it. It shouldn't be super stigmatized to let your kid go to another family. And it should be to okay. A better family. Yeah. yeah. It should be okay for someone who's 
like we have a friend of ours, like a couple friend who their husband had a heart transplant, two heart transplants now, and they won't mm-hmm. let them adopt a kid because they say he, he he's going to die. And it's like, so what people die all the time and he wants, they want to have a kid. They can't have kids because of genetic other reasons. And they probably don't want to pass on the like heart defect stuff, but like let them, the, the woman, like the girl, she's not in any peril. There's people that have a kid and their significant other die all the time. That's the thing as well, right? There's, there's so much worry around like what happens if this kid gets to this age and they don't want to, and they want to find out who their biological parent is or whatever. Like the the thing that we continue to neglect is that there are always going to be those outliers that have that that real care factor, right? But the kids who grow up in their world believe their world is normal. So Gabe knows that he has two mums. He knows that he's got two mums and his other friends have dads. Oh, for a long time, he just thought there was a bunch of blokes out there that had named that were named dad. So when he'd meet them, <laughs> when he'd meet them, he'd assume their names were dad. How's it um, going, Mr. Dad? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there was Gabe always, and it's so interesting watching him grow up because he always puts me in the same category as him and his brother and Chandler, Aaron's, Aaron's boyfriend. So when he's like, oh, he goes to me for some reason or he was going through this thing and he's like, I want to buy a, a red bunny for mama and Lara and Erin and Ruby, which is Jesse's girlfriend. And then he's like, and I'm going to buy a blue bunny for you and me and Jesse and Chandler. And I'm like, in his head, in his head, the paternal role is filled by myself and the maternal role is filled by Christy. Yeah. Like, it's not the mum and the mum and the dad role. It's just our family dynamic. Yeah. He looks and he associates himself more closely with the with the role and the person that I am kids. as a reflection of himself and that carer, caring person being in his mum. That's why kids are amazing. That's why kids it, that makes me think of like, I don't know if you ever saw this in Australia, but there was a picture of two kids with the same haircut, one black kid, one white kid. And it's just yeah. like the captions, like the white kids like he wanted to get the same haircut as his friend. So people couldn't tell them apart. You know, kids yeah, are exactly. so cute because they don't have it in them to like think they just, whatever's normal, it gets normalized to them. Like it's so fun. Yeah. And that's the thing that's it's, it's normal to him. So I think there's too much stigma on, they have to be with their natural parents. No, they fucking don't. I get that there's biological and nature parts of parental bond with children, but I just don't think it's as important as nurture. And I, I hand on heart believe that there's the element of both, but you can have a fully functioning adult that's loved and capable of, of maintaining sophisticated and elevated adult relationships that was raised by people that weren't their biological parents. I think, I think nature comes into play more if you're stuck in a shitty situation, right? Yeah. Because then you're just left to fend yourself and you're learning about like you're nurture. I guess that's still nurture because yeah, I agree. I think nurture takes a way bigger part in all of human existence like some people like that's the when you get like were they just evil did they like what because we're doing the, when we do the true crime stuff it's always like were they born that way it's like no they had a shitty life <laughs> like most times it's nobody's just mm. comes out pure evil it doesn't happen i don't think and it's and it's the predisposition that you talked about before. Like a person who comes out and who is going to eventually murder probably has a predisposition to not being able to handle trauma in the same way. Yeah. Like it's the the pre the nature part of it is far more involved in a predisposition and ability to engage or disengage in in the ways that you like. You look at some of the ways that these kids like these these. Um, horrible, horrible people grew up. I know people who grew up like that. I know people who had those lives and some of them aren't great, but not none of them that I know of are murderers. <laughs> like, oh, for sure. And then know? that's, there's, there's another proportion to that too. You're right. It's like a perfect storm. I don't think it's all just like you can compare, but then there's always that something else and someone just yep. went that extra step, you know, they never really thought. And then they're sometimes they just smack them too hard and kill them and then decide oh i like that you know what i mean like bad shit happens quickly and that that can affect you too so Mm. but yeah nature is a big part of it like i find with myself let's say i i know i have an addictive personality i know 
it's hard for me to quit smoking. I've tried a bunch. I think I can just get away with having one little bowl of chips sometimes or whatever, right? Like I can, I'm, I'm easily addicted to things. And I know my mom's like that. And I know my grandma's like that. I know my family like that. So that's a trait, mm. right? But mm. me being a decent, nice enough person, I, I blame my parents for that. I don't blame just because the way I am, you know, my parents taught mm. me to be nice. My parents taught me to say thank you and please and respect mm others like that was taught to me that's not that didn't just come with me you know a hundred percent it's it's i i think i think yeah it it even moves away from from making adoption easier but how do you like there's because when you look at like crackhead sally and her 12 kids right there is no benefit there's no benefit but maybe maybe there is kids are so full of potential those kids could do something amazing. Those kids could uh, cure cancer. How? How? Just being a, just being in there, like learning quickly. Like some kids are just geniuses. You think like everybody that's made any type of fina- fantastical discovery was like in a proper household or like, no, that's not the case at all. Like people that have changed the world have been treated like shit when they were kids and come from crackhead sallies of their own and they've persevered and made something of themselves so nah. they're so <laughs> most of the most of the time it's middle middle class most of and a greatest greatest proportion of is middle class of the ones that like <clears throat> came from a relatively to poor background you don't it doesn't happen there the or it it very rarely happens from below the poverty line and I've never looked it up really, but I, I just assume there's got to be all sorts of, it can't just be from one socioeconomic class because it makes no sense. That's not how anything works. I'm not saying all of them. I'm saying most of them. And, you know, I was about to say the ones that would come up and do really well and be, you know, societally successful that have traumatic backgrounds are usually in the arts. So musicians, rappers, yeah. Artists. Yeah. yeah. So. I, and okay. Uh, comedians. Comedians are very fucked up. Most of us are all very traumatized from a youth. Mm. But maybe it's not even something to that extreme. Let's say maybe it's if this lady, crackhead Sally, doesn't have kids, she ODs and dies. Okay. Or crackhead Sally on her 12th child uh in, in, go both ways 12 12 child goes maybe i should stop the crack i have 12 kids now and then just like motivates herself to stop be, be a productive member of society because she looks into that 12 child's eyes and goes you know what this isn't worth it anymore or the kids get older and now that she had kids they they help her out of her situation and or they get they look at their mom and become like a nurse so they can watch her when she gets older you know what I mean? Like it doesn't have to be a huge ripple, but it could be a ripple enough to like change someone if they don't, or if they do, they could be even worse. They could be like, my mom was a piece of shit to me and stabbed them in the throat. That could happen too. But I'm just saying there's so much potential there that who knows what could ever happen. And if you start I'm not, policing I'm not people's... holding my breath. I'm not holding my breath with, with crackhead Sally. She's let me down. Crackhead Sally. Lie. You know what? Crackhead <laughs> Sally is not a good example because she's fucked everyone over. Everyone I know. Yeah. Yeah. She once kicked my dog and spat, <laughs> and I didn't spat spend, in my child's face. <laughs> <laughs> she went, crackhead Sally's let me down. I'm not holding my breath for her. I'm not comfortable that she's going to eventually make a turn around. I reckon she's going to end up as a gutter trash. But... I get what you're saying. However, counter argument to our counter argument to our counter argument. <laughs> I said this to Christy the other day when I was having my shower thoughts. I was saying to her, I was like, so say for example, like we were talking about our kids, um, which is what sort of rolled us onto the topic, right? People who have experienced trauma just have a uh, ma- I can't describe it in any other way that potentially just a a little bit of blinkers are taken off. Like they can just see a little bit wider periphery of the world. You just have more life experience, whether it's good or bad, still there. And let's just use the example, right, that they have, and this is not how I mean it, it's just the best way I can describe it, right? They have access to a higher, uh, higher plane of understanding because they've experienced 
the worst of something, right? Whereas, so in gaming terms, it's unlocked something, right? You've got this extra thing that you understand. Not, Not from great things, however. But what is wrong? What is wrong? with not having to have what it's almost like it's almost like there's a stigma that if you haven't experienced trauma and you don't have a like a higher understanding or a, or a search for self that is uh, a little bit more woke that you're not as fulfilled and I just I don't think that's right I just don't what is wrong with a what is wrong with a a generation of people who have limited trauma in their lives and who don't have a higher understanding of self but are happy and productive and educated and and half of their brain power isn't taken up worrying about their triggers and their neural pathways that haven't developed properly what's wrong with a bunch of people who have correctly formatted brains to be successful at the sacrifice of maybe a higher understanding or an access to an artistic or a different perception of the world I can't I said I was like talking to Christy I was like I just don't know that there's something I want to shelter my kids my younger kids from trauma and if that makes them a little bit self-centered a little bit un not have understanding of other people in a in a deeper context because they can't they haven't experienced the worst of humanity i just don't know if there's anything wrong with it there isn't bo there's nothing wrong with that at all because like the the trauma that shaped you has made you you which is a great beautiful thing that's sitting in front of me right now stop okay but i mean you you that's from my perspective and I didn't have to go through your trauma, but would you want somebody else to get exercised? Like, would you want to put that your kid through that? No, you wouldn't. Right. So sure. We got you out of that deal, but we could have got something much worse. We could have got something that's damaged beyond belief. And now like in married to some man, very horribly, like going to church every weekend and being like i got the demon out of me and telling every story and actually secretly inside hating yourself you could have been that too Mm. you know Mm. and what's that's the goal is to make our kids have a better life than us and if they didn't have a better life than us then we fucked up right uh that's the way i look at it that's the way i look at it and if my life right now is interesting because of the trauma that i had to deal with it that's the trauma i had to deal with and that's what i will bring to the world and give it out to them but I'm not going to make my kids have to go through what I went through. They can find their own trauma, you know, different things. They can find, if they want to be like artists and stuff like that, you don't have to have trauma to do that. You just, it just yeah. helps. Usually the greats are very fucked, right? Like a Richard Pryor crackhead. But yeah. I mean, I don't want my and kids to be like that. I want them to be boring lawyers. I want them to have a 4301K or whatever the fuck you call a retirement program. I want them to have a life where they don't have to think about the shit that I had to think about make their life easy and sure that might be boring to us because we live the way we live but to them it might be the best thing ever i have a boat i go out on a boat now like cool good for you kids you have a boat that's not my interest but hey maybe you're gonna like it you know what i mean yeah and the only other problem i guess with that is that if if the new norm becomes a lot less intrusive i I, actually with a generation of people who can have biological and i'm talking about like the the same biological imprints on your brain formed by trauma from far less triggers like far less stuff like i was called fat in high school and now i've got pts like come on like maybe having the sort of the, the darker side of it and having the darker side by people that you know and having conversations with people that you know I mean I look at our eldest daughter and she has her own things that she sees and her experience are very traumatizing to her but in comparison to other people are fucking nothing but it's her reality it's the way that her brain has made it up All so pain hurts and the you same see that both. with lots of lots of yeah, exactly. Oh, so it's like maybe it, 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 we took it down that path where we removed as much trauma as possible. Someone breaks their leg and misses out on third grade camp. That's traumatizing for the rest of their life. And they write songs about it. 
for sure. And, and that's just the way it's going to be. It's the human condition. It's stupid. I agree with you because like, but think about, think about the generation before us. They must think we're fucking bunch of sissy pieces of pansy. Like they want to go, they're 18 years old, storming fucking beaches, trying to kill Nazis. I was uh, complaining. I couldn't pay my rent on time. You know, like, I don't know. I, I, I think like that just shifts over time. And, and see, that's the whole thing with the PC culture that is so generational. And that's why the younger, like crazier side of the PC thing will never understand me because I just grew up in a different time and I try my mm-hmm. best to like be good about it. But I mean, I'm not, I'm not hateful. You're not hateful. People aren't hateful. You know what I mean? Most people are just, just trying to make their day go by quicker, you know, just trying to go by their day. And if you want to, if you want to spend your energy, that's trauma to me too. You must spend your time yelling at people for words. They said that had nothing to do with you. It drives me crazy. I keep well, completely growing up differently. That. And also I, I hate, I, I like, that's a whole nother. Yeah. That's a different ethical them, debate. Fuck me. We're on the boat on the same side of that one. I, I think, yeah, I, it's a, it's a real tough one. I think it's a really tough one. It's almost like how much trauma is good trauma. <laughs> Uh, well but like i said earlier this kind of I, i'm glad we do these in twos now because it's fun like it, it adds to the other conversation we're having like if you don't have any type of trauma then you will not understand joy like you you will find trauma mm. doesn't matter in whatever so that your good parts of your life seem good or you understand what good actually is so like you broke your leg and now you have ptsd then that just makes like the nights you went out with your friends getting drunk that much more fun because that grade three broken leg and i missed the the play but i can't even if you don't have trauma you're gonna find it trust me misery is a thing we all need it to an extent there's nobody that's bliss all the time everyone's pissed about something doesn't matter who you are right yeah yeah and and that's, that's probably like and i guess you see that in comedians and you could probably say this as well like i'm i'm traditionally the most overtly extroverted person in a room and I one of my skill sets and my boss said the other day is I'm just I'm really able to just turn it on so if Sam is if my boss is like oh um this person's like this is this is we need more energy we need more hype they just come and ask me to do it and I go and hype everybody up like I can turn it on no matter what's going on in my life um so outwardly a lot of people, like I said to someone the other day, I was like, I am constantly afraid, like constantly afraid. It's, it's something like, especially after Gabe and Lyra were born, I just, I'd never, ex- I'd never experienced fear until I was giving birth to Gabe. And then he didn't breathe for like 45 seconds. And I was like, in that moment, I'd never realized before what it felt like to be gen- like so afraid and helpless. Right. And and then it just sort of hurt. For, I said, I was like, I literally am afraid all the time. And they were just like, I could never have picked that because I'm just genuinely trying to have a good time a lot of the time. Like I like to have fun and I like to be joyful and I like to find joy and create joy as much as possible. But again, on the same side of that, I, the, the two things I'm always battling is I never fit in. So I always feel a little bit... Um, like I always feel I'm not able to connect properly with other people and then I always feel afraid so there's always the other side of it happening all the time you're right you can't really experience one without the other yeah and I think I think what you're describing is like a lot of people's what they feel like Mm. even the most popular girl in school or the fucking you know like even the the most like and Alec Baldwin's feeling it today you know what I mean like Mm -hmm. I can't get no love nowhere, even though people love you, Bo. And I hope you know that. I hope you know you fit in with us Aww. very well. I hope you know that. Thank I you. hope you have a you fit yeah. in. Uh, you fit in with me very well. That's that's all that matters. I, yeah, no. Yeah, I, I, I um. Once I, I think um. I, I, you're you don't come across as someone who's uh, in the beginning. I didn't think you came across as someone who was um really love driven. But then as I've gotten to know you, I'm like, he is so love driven. Like everything that drives him is his love for his kids, his wife, the people around him, his, his community, his career. 
Yeah, and I I have so much like I have so much respect and value for someone who's love driven because I think it's just it's it's one of the purest forms of people trying to connect. Yeah. In um I don't like other people. I don't like the way society is and that's the only way I can help out is make what yeah. I love and people love what I love. I think I think that we the conclusion we can come to I, I will concede this one. As much as I can't, I can't cognitively come to terms with it, I will concede that this one that we shouldn't put a license and a breeding license and a tag on people. I'm going to kind of concede round, fuck you. a fuck you too because I'm going on your side a little bit on this where I say maybe not a license, let's say, but I think, and people can do whatever they want, but I think it should be mandatory that you, maybe not mandatory because we don't really talk about this as much, Maybe I think there should be more options for people who are having kids to learn about Amen. having kids. And I don't think there's enough of it. I think we should normalize a lot of this stuff. Help out a lot more, you know? I, I don't know normalize if you guys Normalize have... anal. Yes, there you go. All right, that's how we're ending. That's how we're ending. <laughs> I just watched Private Dicks and I think RJ's the funniest. What? Come on!